Hello, so uh, today we are doing this problem um, that consists of searching a maze and basically the problem says that I have here a drawing for it so let's look at it. So the problem says we have this maze and uh, we start out from this circle position and um, we the, the empty ones are empty spaces that we can go through and we have the destination represented by this star point here and we have the we have walls that can be the boundaries and also in these places um, and so the goal here is to find a path from this start point to this destination with a couple of conditions first is that if we go through um, let me just draw this so if we go through from here um, let's see. So basically, if we go from here, we have we can't stop here. We have to go all the way down until we reach a wall. And so you can't just we can't just go here and then go here. A move has to the ball basically rolls down. If you push it down, it will go all the way until it gets stopped by a wall. And so that's the that's the gist of the problem. And so the goal here. Let's see how can we get to this destination point. So we can go all the way down here, and then go, basically not go all the way down, but go f left first until we reach this, um, this wall here, and then we will go down, since we are at this, so when you reach a wall, you basically stop at the empty space, and then we can go all the way down until we, we get stopped by this wall, and then we are here, we go right, until we get stopped by this wall, and then we go all the way down, we get stopped by the, this um, this wall. Then we go right, we get stopped by this wall. And now we go all the way down, we get stopped by this wall. And then we get all the way here, we get stopped by this wall. But at that point, we have reached our destination, and we return true. So that's the first example, and it's this input here. We get the start point, which is um, this circle here, and we get the destination point, which is this start point here. And the other thing also is that we have these values, 0, uh, that represent empty space, um, like this square here. And we have uh, 1 that represents a wall, which are these um, filled uh, gray um, places here, right? So this is how it looks like. And the goal is if we find a path, we need to return true. Um, if we can't find a path, we return false. So the second example we can't find a path. So the second example, um, let me show you here the example. It's this one. So the second here, this one, we start from here and the destination is here. But the problem is, if even if we go left, we get stopped by this wall, go all the way right, get stopped by this wall, go all the way, um, go all the way right, get stopped by this wall, go all the way down, get stopped by this wall, and then go all the way here, get stopped by this one. But the problem is when you roll down, we can't stop at the destination. We have to go all the way down until we reach um, until we reach a wall. And by that point, we can't. We already passed um, through the destination, so we can't get there. We can't stop there. We can't stop at the destination, and so we return false. Um, okay, so let's think about how we can solve this. So one way to think about this is that, well, we could just um, just grabbed again so well we can just do a simple thing just go all the way down with DFS and keep doing what we did and try a path until we can't we, we can't move anywhere and then stop that path since it didn't lead to a solution and try multiple paths with DFS until we reach the destination the only distinction with the normal DFS is that we can't just, our neighbors aren't just the ones that are just one step to the left, one step to the right, one step up and down. Those are not our neighbors because the ball rolls down. So the neighbors are go, le go down until you reach a wall, go left until you reach a wall, go right until you reach a wall, and go up until you reach a wall. So those are the neighbors. And so that's the change that we have to make. And so let's 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 draw that, let's uh, implement that and so the first thing we can we, uh, we is we need to find our dfs right and so our dfs will have a maze uh 
a start position end position and of course we need um, we need our destination right and so uh, actually let me just use find path but do DFS for it um, okay let's just define DFS so that's a lot clear so let's call this one find path DFS and so what we are going to do is we are going to check if start um, basically 0 and start 1 are equal to destination so basically if start is equal to destination that means we, we can return true because that means that the values are the same um, and then we need the directions of that we are going to move at so we are going to move right um, and then left uh, and then up or down and then up so these are our destination right our direction that we can move to and then for each um, node so this is DFS so for each node we need to go through its neighbors and so the neighbors we can obtain them by going through each direction and going all the way from this direction let's say we are here we need to go all the way until we reach a wall, which is this one value here. And so we are going to go through our directions, which are dx, dy, n. And so the, the start position would be i equal to x plus dx. And basically x is the start position 0. So let's just say x and y are equal to start 0 and start 1 and that would be this and let's call this neighbors x and neighbors y this would be y plus dy and or let's just assign x first and y and then we can check so while basically maybe the left is just like for example in this case the right position is just the the wall so we can't move there and so what we are going to do is while an x plus dx is within the boundary then basically the ball keeps keeps rolling um, so keep rolling the ball in the current direction until we hit a wall or a border right? because yeah until we are at the end also of the of the grid and so that's basically why we have this is possible to go through length of maze and same thing for um, the y position so that would be ny plus dy uh, maze of zero and it's not a wall which means we can just say it's an x plus x plus dx and y plus dy are different than one that's the what the wall value is one right so while we are not we haven't hit any of these we can keep continuing and continuing means just adding the value of the going in that direction more and so that's nyx plus y and ny plus dy and uh, you can notice here we will exit this once we can't roll anymore and so basically we will stop just before the the wall that we hit right just before the wall because what we are interested in is in this is this position because at the destination we don't want to compare with this we want to compare with this which is the destination point um, just before hitting a wall right and so what we are going to do for that is after the, after going through um, and getting to the neighbor that we can that we can consider we need to check if it's um, we need to check if it's not visited and so normally visited we can just have a set visited because we, want, we don't want to keep it, keep visiting again and again but what I'm going to use here instead is since the, I know the values are just 0 and 1 I can just put a value that is not 0 or 1 like 2 and that way um, I can mark um, uh, uh, places that I visited with two so that I don't go through them again 
and not going through them again means checking here if maze of an x and n y is not equal to zero, which means it's uh, maybe two. Um, then I can return. I can just continue, like go through them to the next direction, right? Um, and otherwise, I need to mark it as visited. So mark uh, position as visited. So that would be done doing with this. So setting this to two. And then we need to um, we need to check the neighbor that we with DFS here. So we need to find. If this says, if any of the directions says that it's found a position to the destination, that's enough for us, right? And so we are going to say self dot maze. And the start point for this is basically an x and y. And the destination is still the same. And if that's the case, then we can just return true. But if we went all the way through all paths and we didn't find anything, we can just return false. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's try to run that. Let me take um, some example, some test cases that I implemented before. Make sure that we didn't mess up anything. Okay, let's run them. So we have a problem with this first one even, which basically says that this example here, 0, 4, uh, maybe let's take this example, 0, 4, 4, 4, which is 0, 4, 4, 4, that's this one. So this one should return, should say that we have a path, right? So let's try it on this one. So this one says false, but it should say true, right? So let's see what, where did we mess up. Okay, to make this easier, let's just first do it this way and then just check um, like this. So this is almost the same except we need to uh, we need to stop when we reach a wall. Um, and then basically that means that um, we need to stop when we reach a wall but we need to backtrack one time so because when we when we stop here, we would have already reached a wall, so we need to stop so that we can go to the position right before, um, right before a wall, right? Okay, so it still says we have a problem. Okay, let's compare instead equal to destination zero and start one equal to destination one even though that yeah so that was the problem the comparing of list um wasn't working and so yeah so let's avoid this backtracking here we probably don't need it so we can do that by just um going back like this picking this up and going back to where we were um Okay, and so just replace this one, which was the problem. And now our solution passes. Now let's see the rest of the test cases. And they all pass, right? So yeah, so that was using DFS. Basically, we did the normal DFS. This is going through the neighbors, and then um, going to a neighbor only, only when we hit a wall, because the ball will keep rolling in that direction until it hits a wall. And then if it was already visited, we skip it, and we if it's not, we mark it as visited and we explore it. Um, and uh, we return true if that exploration led to, to the destination. And uh, yeah, that's it for DFS. Um, now let's try to solve it with, uh, with BFS. So it's almost the exact same thing, except the way we are traversing is instead of doing depth first, we are going to do level by level, which is B what BFS does. 
Um, so let's try that. Database and same thing. We are going to have to have. We are going to need um, this directions array here, and we are going to need a queue. So we need collections of DQ. Let's call this queue. And we are going to need to add the start position. So um, let's just construct it like this: start zero, and start one. And we need to keep exploring. So this is just the template for um, a queue. And so we will get the position, which are uh, just by um, popping the first element of the queue. So pop left. And we are going to go through the neighbors of that one, but first we are going to check if it's a destination. So if x equal to destination zero and y equal to destination one, that means we reach it our destination. So we just return true, and then we explore our neighbors. And so we do the same thing we did here. And uh, we do the same thing we did here to keep rolling, since this is just getting the immediate neighbors of that position and same thing we are going to check if it was already visited like we did with bfs so check if already visited basically and then we are going to mark it as visited same thing as we did with dfs so that we don't visit it again but the last thing is we don't go exploring since it's not a DFS, it's a BFS, so we need to add it to the queue so that it gets explored level by level. So we are going to say queue append, and we are going to append an X and Y. And at the end, if we didn't find anything, we are going to return false. And uh, let's try on the first one and see if BFS works. So it works for the first example. Now let's replace all of these to use uh, BFS. And let's run it. And it passes. Yeah. So yeah, you can see BFS and DFS are pretty similar. The only difference is that um, instead of going recursively all the way down, we just add to the queue so that it gets explored level by level. And also we are instead of doing it recursively, or we could have, have done it here with a stack, which is equivalent to doing it recursively, is we are using a queue here um, that we can just append to and pop the first element easily. Um, yeah, so basically, this problem, I think the insight of it is determining the neighbors, for, especially for uh, grid type problems that use um, some kind of graph algorithm. Um, it doesn't have to be always the immediate neighbor, like the immediate left one or right one. It can be something like here, keep rolling. And so it can be some condition where instead of just getting the direction and adding the value, you will need to do some processing um, and then obtain the neighbors in some complicated way and then continue your travel. So, And uh, yeah, that's it for this problem. Um, see you next time. Bye.